Hey, hey, everybody. This is Larry. This is day 18, is it? I hope so. 18 of the Lico Day Challenge. Hit the uh, like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's poem. And apparently, we've done it before. Let's see. We have 2966. Divide array into arrays with max differences. Okay. You're given. Oh, yeah. Uh, I didn't. No, I went to the gym a little bit today, but uh, I'm st I'm basically trying to rest up so that uh, I still haven't decided if I want to do the 50k. But if I were going to do it, then I want to be you know in shape for it, uh, and that means resting a little bit. Because if I'm doing 50 kilometers in two days or whatever, then you know I have to be a little bit more rested than I am now. And I'm eating, I'm carving up a little bit. Uh, I don't know if I I'm, I can actually do it to be frank. Um, because the longest one I've done this year is 20k, maybe 25k. So yeah, this year I'm I'm not really running as much as I used to. So we'll see. It'll be fun. Uh, I mean, there'll be a lot of walking, so it's not going to be like a just one one. But we'll see. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's take a look at today's problem. We have an array. We have size n. N is a multiple of three positive integer k. Divide nums in the n over three where. Si uh, uh, of size 3 satisfying the following condition. The difference between any two elements in one array is less than or equal to k. Okay. Uh, hmm. Well, first of all, first of all, it seems like uh, some numbers don't matter, right? In the sense that uh, if n over 3 away, yeah, length of size 3. Because you have three numbers, as long as two numbers are... Co co um, as long as two numbers are close enough, it doesn't matter where the other one is, right? And as a result, I think you just do a sweep line, right? Because now... Because I think the, the, the tricky part about this is proving correctness and for greedy, right? But if you have some number, maybe say k is equal to 2, so you have 1, 3, 5. And the reason why I bring up examples like this, sorry, I dropped my pencil, uh, is stuff like, um, because when uh, the way that greedy goes wrong is when you have to make a decision. And when you make the wrong decision in which you try to optimize some local way and it doesn't work globally, that's when it doesn't work, um, right? So that's why it's all about the choices or about the decisions, almost like, uh, you know, in life almost, which is kind of, okay, too deep for this topic, uh, too, too deep for this YouTube's, but in any case, right? So I have someone like this, which forced me to have a choice, which is how I always kind of write this, right? So if I have this, I ask myself, well, do we, does it, like, let's say we're going from left to right without loss of generality because you can always just flip from going right to left or smallest to largest or whatever, um, as long as you're consistent. Um, well, in this case, is there any advantage of doing 3, 5, and 1, right? Or, so there are two ways to split this up, of course. You have, uh, because for the purpose of what we said uh, for this problem so far, we only care about two elements. The third one, it can be anything, right? So we don't really... Oh, wait, wait, did I misread this? No, 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 sorry, I misread it. Any two numbers, not... Any two elements in the same array and not... Um, and not... Uh, okay. I don't even know how to say it correctly another way. It's just so awkward. What I was going to say is that it's not like um, uh, only two, two... Or like two numbers in one array is enough to satisfy the condition but it has to be it should i think it, it should write every two elements not only not any two elements uh, I, I think that would be more precise um and here they have like some random things to throw you off but it uh, honestly this um yeah yeah so i misread this for a second um but the, the, i think the greedy is actually ironically maybe not ironically it's the same thing the third number still doesn't matter um you have to go from left to right why? Well, in this case, it is a little bit easier in the sense that um, why do you have to go from left to right and keep everything the smallest? Well, because uh, without loss of generality, okay, let's say, yeah, k is equal to 2, so you have, like, like let's say, a lot of uh, numbers, right? Then in this case, the thing is that your question is, okay, 
does it ever make sense to okay so one of way you can imagine splitting it is something like this right uh and the dash being the split but you can ask yourself well uh um, would it ever make sense to skip a number well okay the way i construct it not really but uh maybe i have like three five and seven but then you skip the one well the problem is that it never gives you a better result and the reason is because here um, you could kind of, and I'm I'm kind of hand wavy here because I don't want to spend all day with the with just like the semantics uh, for this video anyway. Is that in here you can imagine that the next number is seven, right? Because uh, uh, the thing that is the same on the right side, it's going to be nine and eleven, right? So something like that, they're the same, right? And then now then. <clears throat> Then you can, in this case, look, you have 9 and 11, it doesn't change. You can have either a 1 or a 7. Well, in this case, you always want a 7, right? Because with the 1, it depends on the K-mar, of course. Like, it can only fail and thus give you a worse result, where a 7 will only give you, will always give you a better answer, right? And you could do the same thing with a 5, maybe, even though it doesn't really work because K is equal to 2 in our, our example. But you, you get what I mean with the, and this is um, how you do kind of a variation of the exchange argument, um, right? Because because you can another way to f say it is that okay, so if we have used the seven, then what works with k? Right, k works for z uh, two and then three and then four and then five and then th seven dot dot dot. Right here, the k has to be at least eight, nine, ten dot 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 because nine and one. Well, actually, I guess in this case, it's actually 11 and 1. I forgot how they structure. So I forgot that this form is a little bit awkward. So uh, I, I mean, I, I, mean I, I think I got it, but it's not between any two adjacent elements. So the proof is actually the same. It's between any two elements. So it's going to be 1 and the 5. So actually, this is going to be a 4, right? So anything 4, 5, 6, dot, dot, dot. And this is actually um, yeah, 10, 11, 12, dot, dot, dot. But the same idea, right? And what I mean by that is just that, you know, uh, however, like the, the world of possibility where you choose the seven is always going to be bigger than the world where you choose one. There's no cases in which there's a K that exists where we want the one and the seven is not possible. Therefore, there's no decision because this is um, the world in which this is possible is always uh, a little bit better, right? So, okay. So with that in mind, then um, it should become pretty straightforward. We just sort, and then we should be able to go from left to right. I hope I'm not wrong. <laughs> it is very easy to be wrong in these things. Um, right, so we, we skip every three, and then it's just if num sub i, num sub i plus two minus this is less or greater than you go to, or greater than k, then we return um, empty away. Otherwise, then we can. Uh, I think there is like a Python thing for grouping them into three, but I forget how it goes. So we'll just write it out. It doesn't matter, right? Uh, uh, we can actually put it here, right? Uh, yeah, I. Something like that, right? Yeah, let's do a quick submit. Hopefully, we're not wrong. Because greedy, I, honestly, I say all that, and greedy is still, uh, I, I, you know, I, I feel uncertain sometimes of greedy still. So yeah, but that's basically it. Um, I hope the proof kind of makes sense in the exchange way. Um, it's still very tricky. Like honestly, like I said, like when I, I submitted it, I still have a bit of a doubt of like, okay, what if I missed the case of what if I misunderstand it. But, uh, but, and you may ask, you know, how do I get better then, right? Um, like, how do I get better at these kind of problems? And honestly, for me, it is just doing a lot of problems, doing a lot more greedy problems. Um, some of the reason is because then you recognize more greedy problems, and also you're able to, um, a lot of the things you don't have to reproof for the first time, because like, oh, I don't have to prove this because I remember this proof, that you've done before, presumably, from another problem, or this property that you have proved before, you have proven before. So yeah, um, that's it. That's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. And yeah, stay good, stay healthy, do your mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.